This video demonstrates how one can use the Ceph Manager to edit a Ceph file so as to include a trading partner's specifications of its implementation guideline, and then use this customized Ceph file to get a more accurate validation of their EDI file. For this demonstration, we will use a copy of JCPenney's 846 implementation guideline. Next to it, I've placed the Ceph Manager, which I'll use to edit a generic 846-4010 Ceph file to create a customized one specific for this guideline. Before I edit this generic Ceph file, I'll make a copy of it so that we have a backup of the original. I'll rename this copy by adding JCP initials to the end of the file name. This is the Ceph file that we will edit. Okay, let's now open up the Ceph file with the Ceph Manager. The first thing we notice is that the Ceph file shows a lot more segments than the implementation guideline. The missing segments means that they are not being used. So in the Ceph Manager, let's go ahead and toggle those segments that are not in the guideline as not used. So starting with the ST segment, we see that it's in there. So is the BIA segment. But the CUR segment is not in the guideline. So we're going to right click on it, select change segment reference, then in the user requirement field, select not used, then click on OK. We should see not used next to the segment. The next segment, DTM, is also not specified in the guideline. So I'll toggle this not use, but this time I'll take a shortcut and use the hockey control Q. The ref segment is in the guideline, so we leave it alone. Basically, we continue doing the same thing for the rest of the segments, comparing the segments in the set file to those in the guideline and changing their user requirements appropriately. So let me pause the recording while I do that. Okay, I've just completed marking the last segment that was not in the guideline as not used. Now we have to go back to the ones that are being used to check whether the requirements are mandatory or optional. So back here at the ST segment, we see an M in this column, meaning its standard requirement is mandatory. In the attribute column, we see that it's also an M. If we check the ST in the set file, it shows an M here, so it's already specified as mandatory. So we don't have to make any user requirement change to this segment. Same thing for the BIA segment. There's an M in this column and an M in this one. So we don't have to make any change here either. But for the ref segment, we see an O here, meaning that the standard requirement for this segment is optional. But we see in this column MU, which stands for must use. So to change the user requirement for this segment, right click on it and select change segment reference. Then go to the user requirement field and select must use. Note that the user requirement takes precedence over the standard requirement, which we have left as optional. If we look at the guideline, the other segments that have the user requirements changed are the PID and QTY segments. I'll change them in the set file now from optional to must use using the shortcut hotkey control W. Okay, now that we're done with the segments, we have to do the same with the data elements and compare them with the guideline. So let's score the guideline up to the ST segment detail. In the Ceph Manager, let's expand the ST segment to see the data elements. We see two mandatory data elements as in the guideline, which also has code 846 specified in the first data element. If we check the Ceph file, the same data element has no specific code, but a list of all valid codes for the standard. To specify the code for this data element, right click on the code node and select add code. Then in the code value field, enter 846 and click OK. So now when we click on the code node, then portion 1, we see the code 846 only. OK, we're done with the ST, so let's move on to the BIA segment. We only see four data elements specified in the guideline. While the Ceph has six data elements. Comparing the two, we see that the last two data elements, 5 and 6, are not used. So we'll mark them not use. Next, we add the code value 00 for the first data element as in the guideline. Then add the code value SI to the second data element. So moving on to the next segment, REF. We add the code value IO to the first data element.
Change the user requirement of the second data element to must use. And mark data element 3 and 4 as not used. Basically, we do the same steps to the rest of the data elements in the segments that are used in the guideline. So let me pause the recorder while I make those changes. Okay, now that we've made the changes and completed our customization to this Ceph file, click on the save icon to save it. We are now ready to test the Ceph file we just modified by validating an EDI file against it with the EDI Dev eFile Manager. So let's bring it up. I'm going to use this test M846 EDI file, but first let me open it with a generic Ceph file. When the eFile Manager opens an EDI file, it validates it at the same time. Had there been any errors, they would have been listed here at the error box. But there are no errors, so this 846 EDI file is compliant with the X12 standard. Let's close this and open up the EDI file again, but this time with our customized 846 JCP Ceph file. This time when the file is open, there are several warnings in the error message box. If we double click on an error, it will take us around the area where the error occurred. This error is basically saying that SN is not valid value for data element LIN04. To verify this, let's view the Ceph file. Find the LIN segment, expand it and click on data element 4, then expand the code, then partition 1. Sure enough, the only valid code for this data element is SK, therefore SN is not valid. And to make sure we did not make a mistake in editing this Ceph file, let us check the JCPenney implementation guideline. Here is LIN04. And this too shows that SK is the only acceptable code value for this data element. Now let us go back to the eFile manager and check on the other errors. Let's double click on this error about a missing mandatory PID segment. It takes us to the QTY segment after the LIN segment. Let us check the Ceph file to verify this error. Here is the LIN segment. Right after it is the PID segment, which is marked Must Use. The QTY segment is way down here after the PID segment. So the ADI file should have a PID segment between the LIN and QTY segments. If we go back to the eFile Manager, the mandatory PID segment is missing between the LIN and QTY segments. So this is definitely a problem with this EDI file. Finally, let's double click on this last error about a missing mandatory composite element C001. It takes us to the QTY segment. Let's expand it. We don't see any C001 composite element in this segment. So let's go back to the Ceph file and look at the schematics of the QTY segment to verify the requirement of C001. Here's the C001 seg composite segment. And its user requirement shows must use. So the validation is correct to flag this as an error. What we've shown here is that the more you include your trading partner specifications in the customized Ceph file, the more accurate the validation you get of their EDI file.